Hi, let's draw together in Procreate. During this fun and chill drawing session, we will turn my old sketch into this final illustration, which I hope later can be on my hoodie or t-shirt. You will see me gesture sketching, using clipping masks and different blend modes, shading and talking about what inspired me to draw this illustration. So, let's get started! I start by making a few gesture sketches first. It is something I have been practicing more lately and I would say if you are struggling with posing your characters and proportions or feel like your drawings are too stiff, you definitely should try to make gesture drawings into your habit. So here I'm not focusing only on rhythms like this, I work more with forms and look for a relationship between three big maces head, ribcage and pelvis. During my first attempt, you can see that I'm trying to understand this pose, but I draw with really short lines, like chicken scratch, and this is not what you want to do. <laughs> Don't be me. Don't do this. Your goal is to create a long and bold lines. And here's my fourth try. You can see some progress with my lines. And yeah, now I'm more aware of the pose, so I'm trying to exaggerate it and give it more life. I'm changing the angle of the head to make the line of action more prominent. Here are all four attempts and I feel like doing one more. This one is a bit different, cause first I put those rhythmic lines like in the bin or pillow exercise. No, not Mr. Bin! This one. It is a really great thing to practice too. So you are basically searching for the two hard forms, ribcage and hips, and a softer skin around them. These are great little notes for your figure drawings. So, it turned out into a very relaxed pose and after comparing my two last attempts, I move with the first one. Here I'm tidying up a bit and making some minor adjustments, clarifying rough spots, adding a touch of anatomy to her legs, now I'm starting to sketch some clothes and I'm trying to use simple shapes for the silhouette. I quickly sketched her facial features and hair, keeping it pretty much rough still. Pushing the pose even more with the transform tool. Here I brought my old sketch and I'm fixing her eyes a bit. And I did some more touch-ups here and there, behind the camera. But don't worry, you haven't missed anything important. And now I'm ready to say that the draft is finished and I start working on the final sketch. Nothing special to comment on here, I'm just going again through the 
whole draft and fixing all the problems and anatomy. Finally adding these hands. And we have our sketch done! Yay! Now we can move to the basic colors. Since I already have my old sketch and color palette, it is just about color picking and filling these flats into our new sketch. I'm keeping all the pieces in separate layers though, so later we can easily make shading by using clipping masks. The color palette here is simple, and I will tell you a bit later what this is about and why it looks this way. And yes, I'm drawing white hair this time. If you don't know, in my previous video I mentioned that I need to draw more girls with light shaded hair. And here we are! I added the background layer here and I definitely should have done this sooner, when I was filling her hair. But anyway! Moving to the eyelashes and brows. As in the previous video, I'm still using my new brush here with a softer end. I like to use a purplish red color for the lower lashes and upper lid the same as for the rest of the skin lines. Creating a new layer and coloring her eyes whites and pupils. In this step I always log these two layers and add some shadow to the eyes. I choose a slightly darker shade and draw a little shadow underneath the eyelashes. Throwing color for the lips and I like how in the sketch we have her mouth a little bit open and can see her teeth a bit. It looks so cute, so I make the same here. Some highlights for her eyes. And, as always, encourage yourself to move forward with your illustration by adding these blushes and it immediately starts to look a bit dimensional. So now we are ready to start drawing line art. I made a new layer for this, above the sketch, and I like to keep line art for each part, like body, clothes, hair, etc., on separate layers, so later we can easily make adjustments or change the color if it's needed. For this illustration, I will mostly put the line art for her body, to emphasize and clarify this simple anatomy. I'm making these overlapping lines to create this illusion of depth. Even in this simplified style, it's nice to give a little hint of different muscles or bones, and it's an awesome trick for this. And I know that it could be a bit tricky, especially in more complicated poses, 
Like here we have some foreshortening, the camera angle is a bit on top, and again, some body parts are overlapping one another, so it's always great to have some references for this. I know it's not always easy to find a reference for the specific pose, but the one thing you can do is take a look at the references for the different parts like hands, legs or ribcage. However, make sure you maintain the same camera angle and perspective when drawing everything together. I think this way works more for advanced artists. So the second method is easier. Just take a photo of yourself in the pose you need and use this as your reference. That's what I did for this drawing. Have you ever tried it? If not, you should give it a shot, and it can save you a lot of time. Alright, I made some shading for her hair, and I'm adding some lines here as well, but not much only to separate different strands or add more details, going back and fixing some shading parts. In this case, her hair is very light and all the shading and lining work together. So I'm going back and forth and looking for the best way to show it. Moving to the lines for her clothes, for this I put only a few lines inside the silhouette. Since it's black, I didn't want to have an outline here. And finally, it's time to talk about inspiration. So, my all-time bucket list dream was to go to the concert of the band, which I loved since my childhood. And the last year this dream came true. We bought tickets and went to see Depeche Mode live. It was in Norway, so it was pretty close to us, and I just couldn't miss it, you know? And that was insane, I mean, I love concerts and this one was awesome. All this atmosphere and energy, lots of people. And there I saw this really nice merch, like many of the fans were wearing t-shirts, hoodies or even jackets with the last album cover. And I was like, okay, I want to draw something like this, it's so cool, I just need to have my own hoodie or whatever. So I sketched up this girl in a t-shirt with Depeche Mode Memento Mori art on it. Here are a few references I found and I loved them. I'm not sure if you know this band, but do you guys love going to concerts? What is your bucket list concert dream? Okay, back to the drawing. So I added a new layer above the skin color, made it into the clipping mask and switched to the multiply blend mode and it's for our shading. So, in case you don't know, clipping masks allow you to link two layers together, so our shading layer is now attached to the flat skin color layer and all our brush strokes will stay inside this silhouette. The multiply mode 
just multiplies the colors of the blending layer, which is our shadow layer, and the base layer, our skin, and it results in a darker color. So it's handy to use for shading. Anyway, I hope this makes sense. Probably nothing new for you here. Since I have only one layer for the skin, not separate for arms, legs or belly, I am using a selection tool for the parts that are overlapping, just to make the process easier and faster. Try to play with different tools and see which one you can use to simplify your drawing process. Here I still use my photo reference. Now as a suggested light, I mostly add drop shadows and a few brush strokes to highlight some muscles and form changes. I also duplicated the shadow flare of the hair to make it a bit darker. And now let's create a new layer above and make it into a clipping mask again, but this time let's use Add Blend Mode. This one will be for our highlights. For the light color hair, it's not super visible, but still, it adds this shiny, more final look. I put all the layers into one group and duplicated it, since now I want to flatten them together and I always want to have a backup just to be safe. And in the sketch, I had this nice rim light that works well with the black color of her clothes, so let's make it here too. And I changed the background color and tried to add some shapes to finish the composition. And here's our final illustration. But of course, I did a second option. What do you think? Black or white hair? Tell me in the comments below. Alright, I would like to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time for the next drawing. Bye! And don't forget to subscribe!